Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can find the show online at buildingthefutureshow.com or follow me on Twitter at Building Show. You can also find it on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. I'm excited to announce that I'm now a brand ambassador for the Business Rock Summit in Manchester, England, April 21st and 22nd, where Steve Wozniak is headlining. More details at business-rocks.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Lucas, and later on we'll talk to Agna from Hardware Trek. Lucas, welcome to the show. Hi, hi, Kevin. Um, hi, guys. It's great to be here. Yeah, thanks for agreeing to do this. I think um, what you guys are doing is is really exciting and um, really needed in the industry right now. But I think before we, we get into the startup, let's uh, maybe get a little bit of background on yourself and let's talk about kind of where you grew up. Uh, yes, uh, actually, I spent most of the time here in Taiwan and in Asia. Okay. And uh, But I did have a little bit of experience in the um, U.S. back in like childhood stage. I spent uh, probably years in the, on the East Coast. Okay, so what made you kind of move from Taiwan to America when you were uh, younger? Well, that's the typical um, Chinese story back then. That the parents want to have a better life for the children, so they try to get uh, the college or the degree stairs and then bring the child there, and then hopefully the, the, the kids can have the better uh, education environment. That's the typical story. Sure. So that's why we were there uh, with the parents and then to expand the UX education environment there. Right. So once you were done kind of post-secondary, you, you ended up going back to Taiwan or, or how long were you in America for? Well, uh, actually it's on and off. Um, my, my parents, my father tried to get a PhD there. So um, our family is like the moving with him for, for years on and off. So, and then when I, around the high school, then um, they asked me just one question. So do you want to stay here or you want to go back to, to Taiwan? So unfortunately I picked the last <laughs> answer. So, <laughs> so that's why I spent the most of the rest of my life here. Then how did you get into technology? Actually, I, I had my um, major uh, in actually it's business and finance. Oh, okay. And then... Um, yeah, and then I just can get excited about the numbers. Okay. Uh, I know some numbers matter to us, um, like in the Wall Street, right? Um, but I just can feel the excitement about the numbers there. So I decided to went to go to the technology companies to try to see what made people excited, actually. So then I, I kind of uh, joined this uh, um, manufacturer, um, typical manufacturers in Taiwan. They help people to build the wireless stuff so then i started my career there in technology and never went back to the numbers finance or whatever okay so what really drew you to kind of technology then other like just just the numbers but were you did you program at all or did you do any design or or you are you kind of non-technical yeah, this is a good question. So um, back then, I was the uh, so-called uh, product manager. Uh, oh, okay. We kind of, I kind of lead the team. Yeah, I kind of lead the team to define the products, uh, to define the market, and then to give the so-called engineers the specification about what they should do or what they should build, and then um, I lead them to like um, which way to go, what kind of product to build. So um, back then, that was like uh, I spent five years. Then I built the um, the RFID. I'm not too sure you still remember this phenomenon. Like yeah, yeah, totally. Fifteen years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the warmer like like to 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 yell at the world, say we're going to have the revolution of the logistics, and then everybody's like crowding, like going to to be like the be joined like the like a crazy things everybody wants to be piece of that sure and then so back then yeah we were one of them and we built the uh, the good uh, technology readers uh back then we competed with um, probably only like 10 of the companies in the world can do that we are one of the 10 oh wow so i started yeah, yeah. I start to understand that when you do something, that's the first first thing I learned about the innovation. 
when you start to do something quite innovate, um, people actually will uh, get interested in you, and then people actually will like to open the doors to you instead of um, I try to sell the sorry about probably a notebook that probably I need the lead need the lots of the effort to do this kind of the um, uh, sales approach or something like that. But when you actually doing something new, well, back then I learned that, that uh, it's. For me, well, I was just like 20 something kids. And then it's for me, it's even I can knock on the door of um, back then will be like the symbol. And then acquired by Motorola, right? Okay, so, awesome. So it's, it's very, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of experience that inspired me that um, when you do something new and then um, the world you're facing will be totally different. Sure. No, I, I think that's that's really awesome. So how did you end up starting Hardware Track? Yeah, the long story short, this is something to mix with my uh, personal experience of um, so-called technology company versus the, uh, the venture capital. And because what I learned from the both experience is actually people spend more time to find the right resource instead of to solve the problem themselves. Sure. Because I, I saw too many of the early stage people or teens, they definitely desperately need the, the resource. And but the question is um, they spend more time to find them, validate them, and then um, actually get the help is quite short. Um, the time that can actually, if they find the right people, this, the problem will be, sh be solved easily. So then we start to think about the, um, after the, uh, I left this VC, I start to think about uh, what exactly I can do to help the early stage uh, teams, companies. So um, we try to build this Howard track first to at least we can connect the people with uh, what we're familiar with right now, the manufacturer resources. Sure, because I, I think what you guys are trying to solve or are solving is is actually a really big problem. There's been a number of you know Kickstarter campaigns that you know they're doing a hardware startup and they don't realize or um, don't really understand how complicated trying to get um, a, something mass produced, right? Especially overseas. And I think what you guys are doing is trying to bridge that gap, and, and it's exciting, and that's what really appealed to me about you guys. And that's kind of why I wanted to have you on the show. So uh, I'm curious then, how did you, or how do you kind of, like if I'm, if I want to build a hardware thing, how do I go about, um, you know, getting your help? Okay, yeah, this is a good question. Um, it's kind of easy. Uh, first of all, if I assume you, assume that you have a, a, at least a good team, like three people, right? And then um, if you have some kind of guy who do a little bit like the uh, engineer hardware a little bit, so you can go send any kind of the request on the platform. And our project managers uh, in-house will get in touch with you to go through the inquiries you have to give you some kind of clarify what exactly you're looking for. And then we will offer you a draft of uh, the production plan or so-called development plan, which means that we outlet the basic things you need to do before uh, actually you can went to the for the mass productions. Um, this is not very short period. It's like uh, usually it's like six to nine months. Oh, so wow. we give yeah, we give you a brief plan that teach you a little bit about when to do what. Okay. So because the hardware, yeah, the hardware things is like not like the software. I can always change the code. I can always change anything, and then through the OTA, I can update that. But hardware, this is something. This, this is like the, uh, physics. You cannot change that. Sure. Some of the the process you have to follow. That. So then, uh, when 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 we offer this plan, then we will start to offer you the resource uh, for the particular stage you are. For example, if you are looking for, uh, for example, you just finished your prototyping on a Duno, and then you're looking for someone that actually to prove your uh, verbal things, and then we can offer you someone uh, actually uh, using the, the chipset you are using, and then they got the experience, so they can help you to design the double E things. 
So this is probably the one you should talk to first and to refine the whole design. Instead of the right now, um, some of the problem we have is um, the, 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 the teams, I'm sorry, the teams usually coming from the software services. So they a little bit like the, a little bit jumped or skipped a couple of steps and then they came to us and then they want us to bridge them to the like the Foscon, the world largest factory. They think that they're ready, but actually they probably like um, uh, 10 months away from that. Okay. So th those are kind of things we try to teach them and then we try to offer them uh, the resource before they can actually uh, approach the big companies like the Foscon or they, they are not ready for that. Right. So so basically, I would come to you with almost like an idea and you guys would help me build a prototype and, and kind of refine that prototype. And then you would kind of help me basically get it mass produced once it's manufacturable. Is that kind of how the whole process goes? Yes, yes. It's I, I would say that it's like an end to end, um, okay. but it's not like cover, cover all by ourselves. Uh, if you come us come to us with only like the the concept or the development boards, usually we will recommend you to talk to a few accelerators. We have incubators on the platform because they offer some good lessons. Okay. And then or the incubation program, and. Um, it's like, like a, it, we try to build the, the Howard track like the destination platform. So when you're here, we got the various kind of the service we can offer to you. And uh, we are the guy to guide you to go which way to go. Okay, that makes sense. So you don't do any of the accelerators yourself, right? You, you just recommend people to go to some of them? Well, um, no, we don't. We don't do the incubation. We don't do the acceleration things. Uh, we only like the play the role like the project manager to them. Okay, no, uh, that makes we sense. We guide them what. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, that's that's really interesting. So, what kind of do's and don'ts um, is there kind of for somebody that's starting up? Like, how far? along should I roughly be before I reach out to somebody like yourself? Because a lot of people just, you know, say, I want to build such and such. They post it on Kickstarter and they don't really know much about how long it's going to be or what it's going to do or kind of the full kind of technicality behind that. So how far should I be along before I actually reach out to you guys? Well, uh, we we don't reject the people. That's the first thing. Okay. And um, but we do recommend them. Uh, we do recommend them to be uh, at least have um, having few working prototypes. Okay. Which means that they are a little bit graduate from using Arduino board or something like that or Addison. Um, they kind of can do their kind of prototyping, lay out the board by themselves, or three D print the 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 outlooks, what they the, the, of the project, something like that. And they did a little bit like the proof of the concept, which means that um, it will works. Uh, it's it's not like we're going to reject you. Say, I want to build this uh, the flying car, right? Sure. Um, we all know you have the good idea. Probably you have the knowledge of that, but it, it's something like that you have to prove in that at least you have something fly already. Right, uh, right. Not very stable, so but we can take over from that. But don't just come to us saying, I want to build a hoverboard or something. I got you. Yeah, you have to kind of have a working prototype that you know your idea is valid and is buildable, basically, is what you're saying. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, yes. I I'm curious then, kind of, do you just do kind of tech projects or do you kind of do th things outside of that space? Like if I want to get anything manufactured um, at a mass market scale, will you help me with that or do you just, just stick in the tech space? Yeah, th this is another good question. Um, given our understanding, of course, uh, in the networks, uh, we can do anything, but... Uh, we cannot do anything good. So we picked to do only the IoT related products 
something like the, the kind of internet connected and then with uh, double E components inside it. Others, uh, there are a couple other people coming to us for like a very fine design of the, the shield of the iPhone or something like that. Um, but we, we just like the talk to them and then we just point out where to go. That's it. We don't uh, more aggressively help the, those kind of projects, but we don't reject them, but we don't aggressively help them. Our focus will be IoT related projects. So is there any other kind of do's and don'ts that you recommend um, to people that are kind of looking to get into the space? Um, I think right now from our, uh, from my personal uh, perspective, I think, uh, perspective, I think uh, right now is the, the people are always talking about that. This is the greatest years, greatest era for the makers, for the creators. I have to agree that because right now, um, I, I think we encourage people with the good ideas and then at least they can do a little bit pro, uh, proving that they should do something, build the stuff or pod, products by their own. So we uh, encourage that. But on the other hand, we also encourage people that um, um, you should focus on what you're good at. Sure, that makes a lot so, of sense. Um, yeah, so um, we we kind of, why we try to offer this kind of service or platform. The the one of the goal is we we love those kind of service. We love the people can do softwares. We love people can coding, um, and and we love them to focus on that. So if they're going to build the hours, we usually encourage them don't spend too much time in Shenzhen or in Asia in the factory. Don't, don't, don't do that. Just find a good partners and then um, focus on what you're good at. And I believe that you can have the great uh, uh, product or service to offer. And so this is only thing um, we, we try to incur, um, to remind the people a little bit. Okay, so I would I don't really ever have to come visit the factory. You guys just handle that. No, no, no. You you do you do you still okay. have to. Okay. Okay. Uh, you still have to, but just don't like spend too much time because you think about it. If you are startups, you only have three people. So would you send one people like six months to 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 in the factory just to fine tune the products or in the production line, which this guy has probably limited experience about what the factory works. So I, I try to tell people like um, software is a, a great world, uh, um, so-called the hardware is. So this is two different worlds. So if you want to build something great, you should find the best guy from the both outside the world. Right. I, I seldom know people actually can like play the good role, good role um, on both sides. This is rare. Okay. No, that's that's actually quite interesting. So how do you guys make money off this whole thing? Do I give you a percentage of the company? Do I pay you kind of a salary? How does that work? Yeah, um, th this is everyday everyday question. So yeah, this uh, um, given my personal experience, I, I am the star right now. Okay. I know how hard I can find the money. And then I was the VC. I know I don't want my money to be waste on some kind of service I don't know. So um, and and so what we try to offer here is we don't charge people for the online service. If they the startups are asking us to do some kind of assistance or help online, mostly we won't charge them. We try to offer them like the this. Um, the uh, extension service and but when people want us to go to the factory on site which means that they want our people to go with them to the factory to verify something to like to consult something with them then we will charge them a, a little bit a couple thousand that's very few okay. so this is right now this is the revenue model uh, we're going to charge from the creators from the startups and in the future and then I, I hope this is a near future and we will get more revenue stream coming from the supply chain side which means the business side the enterprise side 
um, we consider ourselves as the um, the uh, outer channel for the enterprises to access innovations or to access um, great ideas. So we help them to find uh, good ideas to work with. So definitely we love to have some kind of uh, fees from that. Okay, so when you say enterprise, so I would, like if I'm a large company, I would come to you guys and say, I'm trying to build this product. I have a prototype. Help me get it manufactured. Is that what you mean by that? No, 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 no. It's totally different. I'm sorry. Let me clarify a little bit. Um, the enterprise we refer to here is more like the supply chain. Oh, okay. The, the factories for hardware manufacturers, chipset companies. Right, right, right. You, you right. know, you definitely know lots of them. Right now. Yeah, right now they sponsor lots of the incubators, events, or kind of accelerators. Uh, what they're looking for is good ideas, and then they can work then in the future. So I, got you. I think the, our platform is is a good place for them. Okay, so basically you're helping in, get them introduced to these big manufacturers, and then the manufacturers are basically um, helping people build those ideas and potentially acquiring and, and that kind of thing? Um, yes or no, but um, you can think like this. Um, the easy way to think about it is you think um, the enterprise is looking for projects to work with, it's a little bit like the hunting HR hunting for the right talents. The same, right? Uh, okay. They're always looking for the good people. Sure. For the enterprises, they're always looking for the good projects. I don't know what they're going to do with them, right? Sometimes they want to build with them. Sometimes they want to collaborate with them. And then sometimes um, um, they just... They just uh, like to see uh, what the market train will be. Um, there's, there's a different kind of the purpose for the enterprise because uh, right now for the IoT to then, um, the one of the biggest headache is, uh, for example, if I am the, um, let me think about that, if I am the Intel, um, <clears throat> before my business model is to work with the big names, right? Right or to work with uh, big manufacturers. That's my business model. I sell chips. That's easy. I just find the big names. I sell to them. But now, um, you can observe that um, they are trying to come back on the wearable things, right? Because they were slow. They got left behind. They are not even in any kind of the wearable right now. So how are they going to catch up this plan, this train? How they're going to catch up? How they're going to kind of work with the various kind of the small companies or startups? Yeah, so that I think that will be uh, one of the opportunity for us, and then to help them to do that. Sure, that that's actually really interesting. I never really thought of that angle, but I think it makes a lot of sense. Basically, from what parts of the world do I need to be from? Do you basically help anybody worldwide? Or right now, are you only allowed to help certain people in certain countries? I, I don't really understand. the. Is there any legalities around all this stuff? Or it's just kind of, I can hire you guys and you can help me. It doesn't really matter where I'm from. Yeah, exactly. Totally right. Um, now it's the internet world. Uh, it doesn't matter where you're from, actually. Um, and our angle is, if you're from... Estonia, so you can definitely work with us. You don't, without us, uh, you probably need to like fly the half of the earth, the world, to to China, to Shenzhen, and to spend like six months to find the right partners. Uh, with us, you probably only need to like fly once or twice, right. probably stay a couple of weeks. So the, the, the beauty of the internet right now is we try to, to connect the uh, so-called uh, manufacturer world, which is still offline mostly. We try to bring them online. So think about uh, um, you don't need to join the, the, the trade show too, too much or too often once you have this kind of internet services, right? Sure. So this is the way we to promote the platform, why we build the platform. Um, that's that's the one of the key. Okay, so... If so, I fly to you guys and I I come visit. What's how long do I roughly have to stay for? And kind of what's involved while I'm you know in Taiwan working with you guys? 
Well, um, for like, I can give you a like the typical example. Sure. Um, usually, you, usually you need to fly here. Once we help you to find the right partners, you have to fly here to meet them and sign a contract. Okay. Probably stay a week. That's it. Oh, that's it. Wow. That's, it. that's first. No, no, no. That that's first trip. <laughs> right, right. That's first trip. And then for the rest of the follow up, the working, supposedly you can do it uh, remotely. And then when your product is mature enough, they're going to like in the production lines, uh, you probably need to send another people here. And then we will escort with you to, to working on the production line together, probably two, two weeks, three weeks, that's it. And then, then the after we will say like, it depends. It depends how mature the <clears throat> your product design is. Usually, you will need to come around like two or three times, probably each week. That's it, and then and then probably that's the best uh, the the working model you're going to have with us. Just like the lightly travel, and then with the good people accompanying you, and then when you are here, you know what kind of problem, how to solve that. Or the factory, they don't, they do know how to present the problem, and then that's the key to save the time. So um, it's it's like we helped in people to uh, have the similar pattern the big companies have, like before, like Dell people, the people from Dell, right? They they won't like send the one engineer to station in the Shenzhen factory for a half year. Uh, probably they will they will do that, but it's going to be local hiring. But they're going to send probably just one engineers, and then to visit you the factory, and then to oversee the progress to solve the problem. If not, they should leave as soon as possible. Okay. Then that's the model we're going to promote. Them. That's interesting. So you're basically telling me that if I was doing a hardware thing, I could basically have as long as I have like a working prototype, I could basically have a fully manufactured product within a year, maybe a year and a half with you guys? Yes, yes. But, but wait, 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 wait. Okay. Uh, you missed one key. Okay. One key point is how mature is your design is. That's the key. Um, Fair. If the, this is the part we're going to help to, to help the startup to understand how mature the design is. So, that's the if you it, the the scenario described. That's the best scenario. Okay. You have the very mature mature design. You have the verified philosophy. You tested your prototypes many times. So yes, you're probably going to have your products produced in large quantity within six to nine months, maybe. But but most of the time, um, people have the a little bit like the. Uh, design issue because they think this kind of thing could work in like 20 pieces and then they think that this 20 pieces could work so the 200,000 pieces could work too but it's totally different uh, questions of that so um, so there's a huge gap between 20 pieces versus 200 pieces 200,000 pieces so um, the best scenario described is yes if you have mature enough products design and then you have a little bit experience yes we can help you to achieve that kind of schedule sure i i still think I, okay so it, that's like you said is best case scenario but you know i still think that's a pretty short amount of time considering just things that i've other you know just from kickstarter and whatnot sometimes their their products delayed a year or more so I think what you guys are doing is really cool and, and you, you're cutting down the time frame to actually get something viable and in people's hands in, in a really short period of time. I, I think it's it's actually quite fascinating to me that what you guys are doing. Yes, yes, thank you. Yes, this is, uh, this is the best description of our service. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm curious then, is there any products that you can talk about that you guys have you know, kind of helped and now are in the market or is, are you really not allowed to talk about any of those? Well, that's, that's kind of the thing why people cannot hear so many voices or promotion from the manufacturer side, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, just quick question. Have you ever heard any 
manufacturer to promote themselves as I, I, we are the Apple manufacturers. Sure, I, usually I, they can't. Yeah, fair. No, that's <laughs> but, fair. I figured, but I thought I, I, I thought I would try anyway. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we do have a very good successful case right now. We can talk about it because they are talking about it. Okay. Uh, the project of the King Home, K E N Home, King Home. Okay, what is that exactly? Um, they have very good. Oh yeah, um, this is like the smart vents that's a uh, a mount on the uh, the roof or the uh, the wall, the wall to control the um, the air condition coming from your home or your office. Okay. Probably some something above your head right now. That's uh, because uh, right now even with the nest uh, in your house, mm -hmm. um, the temperature control is more like centralized. Then. Sure. So you are feeling, feeling a little bit cold in the bathroom or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, this van can automatically detect and then to adjust uh, the uh, the van itself to control the temperature. Okay. So um, I think they are they were on Kickstarter with the good numbers. I, I don't know about the exact numbers, but and then they are shipping right now. That's awesome. What was it called again? Uh, King Home. K E E N. King... And then uh, H O M E. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, I, know, I recognize the product now that you spelled it out for me. So um, I will post that in the show notes and I will post um, your website as well, which is H W T R E K dot com. Just so uh, you know, yeah. people listening can can check you guys out online. I'm. Is there any other products that you can talk about, or or not really? Well, um, <laughs> unless they are willing to talk about that, but uh, we do have some kind of projects mm -hmm. or products. They are willing to be semi open on the platform. Okay. So, um, People can actually go to our websites and then they can check on the projects there. Um, but most of them cannot be accessed because we have the strict control. Sure. But they can have the, just a glance of that. Um, yeah, so the other couple projects uh, we have, the, we will gradually to uh, promote or to be announced on the website later. Is there any other advice that you'd kind of give people that are looking to do a hardware startup, kind of anything good or bad to, to consider or think about? Oh, yeah. Um, there's one thing we can talk about uh, is um, people always think about um, when they're looking for this kind of service or manufacturers, they, the first questions always will be, can you reduce the cost? Okay. Can you reduce my cost of product? Yeah, this is the first question. But um, usually this is not the right question to ask because... Um, I, I want to, to, to share a little bit of experience we have because um, when you think about the cost of the products, you should think about it as, as a whole, whole, um, whole uh, ideas or whole development costs is included, which means how much time you spend um, developing, how much time you spend on sourcing, how much time you spend on solving the problem in the factories, which is supposed to you should not have those problems if you spend more time in the early stage testing, something like that. Because when you think about the, the product's cost, you should think about the total cost of your company instead, because you are the small companies. You should think about the, should I spend uh, uh, more time in factory or should I spend more time to find the right people to do it? So when we talk about this kind of a cost issue, I always remind them the cost is combined with time you spend, sure. the people you hire, and the, the last one will be the the actual cost of your wearable, for example. Sure. And then the last one could not be reduced dramatically unless you have the large quantity supported, right? That's the basic the physics. You cannot change that. You need a large amount of the orders to reduce the cost. That's hard to. Sure. So is there, sorry to interrupt you, but is there kind of a, a set number that, you know, will greatly reduce my cost or does it really depend on the product that I'm building? 
Well, it really depends on what kind of products you build. Okay, that's because, what I figured. Um, yeah, yeah. Right now, uh, like a year ago, probably two years ago, if you try to build a smart watch, mm -hmm. right now, uh, sorry, two years ago, that will be tremendous expensive. Not just time, people, but also the components. Mm -hmm. But now, you can find the reference design. It's probably only cost like twenty dollars or something. You can build on that to install your software inside that, so you can have the working prototype based on this twenty dollar uh, development kit. Interesting. So it, it, it yeah, it it did reduce largely, but it because more people are working on that. Also, the effort from the manufacturer or hardware side, technology companies doing this are doing this. So um, um, it will come down, but it depends on the, um, actually it still depends on the quantity or the people's interest. Right, right. Okay. No, that totally makes a lot of sense. So just, I was looking up that Keen Home quick. I do remember that vent company. They were on uh, Shark Tank in, in uh, North America. I, I miss, do you guys get Shark Tank or any of the big American shows over in Taiwan? Um, I, I, let me think about it. I don't think we have Shark Tank in Taiwan, but I do know there's a kind of similar TV show in China. Okay. Okay. No, that's cool. I was just curious. I was just, I remember actually seeing the episode and that's where the name, um, when you mentioned it, I couldn't place <laughs> it. And then I was like Googling it quick as we were talking and I was like, oh yes, I do remember that. So, yeah. so that's really cool that you guys are working with them. Yeah. We got a couple of projects on, uh, on the, Shark Tank earlier, too. Oh, really? That yeah. Can you mention it yeah. or no? I'm sorry about that. I totally forgot. I know there's two. Oh, okay. No, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. All right, let's switch gears. Hi, Agna. Welcome to the show. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Agna, and I am marketing director at Hardware Truck. And uh, I really enjoy working here because I get to see all the coolest innovations be before they go um, to the masses. Sure. So it's a really interesting experience. Well, welcome to the show as well. It's it's great to have um, both of you, and it's awesome that kind of get to speak to the two of you about your different perspectives on the hardware side of things. And this whole space is kind of new, and it's it's fascinating to be to me being in uh, North America and not really having these big manufacturing um, facilities readily available in at least where I'm from. Mm, yeah, this is very like I am from Lithuania, from Europe, so we do not have factories as well. So when we coming here to Taiwan and China and seeing all how things are made, it's it's really it seems like magic. Sure, <laughs> um, totally. Like how just idea uh, in somebody's head, and like here two years after that became actual product on shelves. This is an amazing pro process to see, and um, we are I think they're used to seeing products on shelves and they really don't uh, give credit like how much effort, how much thought, how much time and how much resources it takes to make a working hardware product. I think we're just spoiled thinking of that. And now when I see uh, products in any hardware stores, like electronic stores, I really think about how much effort was there, how many people worked on it. And it amazes me all the things that they have. It's actually really amazing times to be alive. Sure. No, I, I totally agree. So do you have any advice for um, aspiring entrepreneurs looking to get in the hardware space? Sure. Um, as for marketing side, uh, my advice is going to be much more towards how to approach your audience. Sure. No, I, I think that's super important. So yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Um, many of the hardware creators uh, think that crowdfunding going to solve everything. Okay. And that's totally not true. If you just come in with your idea or even working prototype, that does not automatically mean that you're going to get $1 million or $10 million and you're going to build your product. So the first thing um, I would give advice is knowing your audience. Build your market, build your audience, build your community way before you start crowdfunding. So build a landing page, uh, get people's emails, involve people in the process of your prototyping, get people testing it, 
um, get people to know you because um, this is amazing actually that through the internet now we can actually have direct access with the makers of all the things so either it's clothing or games or hardware um, gadgets anything like that they can have direct contact with them so this makes this approach much more amazing but then um, the makers, the creators, they have to realize that they have to build audience way before. And I see a lot of a lot of mistakes in this because a lot of people who start hardware are from engineering background, and uh, they're thinking more about okay, these are cool cool functions of my product, but they fail to translate it into people's language, saying what are the benefits of this product to the end consumer. So thinking about um, your audience, how to build your audience, how to build your community, and thinking how to match your product functions towards mainstream audience life benefits, that's what you, they have to think way before uh, they start crowdfunding or, or going further. So that would be my first advice. Build your audience first. Sure. I think that's really good advice. Yes. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of actually good examples of people who've done that. We've seen um, great people coming with a really solving real uh, real problems. For example, now uh, we're working the this uh, hardware startup that is uh, their Same, and they they created hardware gadget that counts how many uh, words does a baby hear uh, in the childhood, like each day. Interesting. So Yes, it is very interesting. You wouldn't think you need that. But actually, according to many researches, uh, how many words uh, a baby hears per day is very important in baby's brain development because all your brain is basically mostly developed in the, within three years' uh, time from birth to three years old. So hearing more uh, words and building your vocabulary and linguistic capabilities in early stages is very important. But new parents usually, they'll, well, they don't know. The baby doesn't, doesn't respond, so how much do you have to talk? So here, the hardware creators, like also parents themselves, they kind of thought of this problem and solved this, this uh, beautiful gadget. But they, of course, they built an audience before, they tested it before with other parents, and did a lot of good uh, community building work and now we have reaped the benefits of that because they just launched Indiegogo and they reached their goal basically within three days. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yes, so that's how I would advise people to go. Um, and then for, of course, for hardware startups, uh, what where hardware track comes in usually is after Indiegogo. So we have the money, we have the funding, and they have a working prototype or even more, but that is just beginning of your journey. Um, having enough money does not mean it's gonna, like your hardware gadget is gonna go to mass production because um, many of these working prototypes usually are uh, from 3D printed parts and uh, they look nice and everything, but um, going from 3D printing into actual hardware development and design for manufacturing that are very different processes. It's amazing what 3D printing can do, but uh, you cannot put 200,000 pieces of your hardware 3D printed. We're just not there yet. Maybe in the future some, some do it someday, but right now what we have is we need to go to the factories. So um, thinking about that way be before is very important as well because your Indiegogo or Kickstarter goal will depend on um, your further product development process. Sure. So, I yes, I would advise planning ahead a lot and thinking of how how much funds do you need to crowdfund? Because we saw way too many startups just um, crowdfunding, uh, reaching the lower goal, um, not enough money, and they just run out of money and they can't do anything. Sure. So, is there? I, this is obviously probably subjective, but. Is there kind of a bare minimum amount that you should raise when you're trying to do a hardware startup? Is it like a hundred thousand? Is it half a million? Is it, or is it just kind of really based on the idea that you have? 
Um, it's based on a lot of things. Firstly, like, did you have ever funding? Did, did your hardware startup, like, are you starting um, bootstrapping? Or do you have any VC funding? Have you been an accelerator? So that means they are, like, you have already some financial help. If you're coming from bootstrapping and thinking, okay, um, how much money will I need? It will really depend on your product. More complex your product is, uh, more money you will need. Sure. But um, how I would advise for these startups just starting out and bootstrapping is coming on Hardware Track. And we have uh, a hub, a product development hub. And there you can see the plan and um, just just seeing like uh, your bomb, your build of materials, like you can more or less, at least initially, see what kind of cost of your final product will be. And then from there, you can build at least project a little bit of, of the actual cost, so you don't have to guess. So um, because we have very good product uh, project management tools on HarborTrack and they're free to use, uh, and you can use, a, use them at any stage, and they're built exactly for, for hardware startups, for building hardware. So if you go in and you start from there, you will have much more realistic projection because I really cannot give you a sum here because sure. it really depends depends on a lot on every component because just changing one component already could could change the whole <laughs> end product price. So that's why it just takes too many too many moving parts there. That's why they say that hardware is hard because there's just way too many little things that you have to think about and having actual project management uh, system like we have is very important because then all these moving parts at least are in one place. Sure. No, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I, I kind of figured when I asked that question that that would be your answer, but I thought I would ask it anyway. But yeah, but, no, uh, Kevin, probably I can add a little bit point on that. Sure. Uh, if, if a startup tried to build the uh, hardware from scratch um, and then they, they can the end goal is they have something that can go on the Kickstarters. I would suggest they should prepare at least like a hundred fifty something. That's a good start. Hundred fifty to two hundred two hundred thousand. Okay. Um, that's U.S. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. No, that's that's really good. Um, sadly, guys, we're we're out of time, but I do really want to kind of promote just a little bit again the website and any other social media links that people can find you you guys at do you do you guys want to rattle a few things off uh, quickly um sure well, that website is hardwaretrek.com h w t r e k.com uh, we have a blog and you can reach the blog from the website as well or you can just go blog.hwtrek.com um, Facebook, the same HW track, and we have uh, active Twitter um, and uh, Google Plus and all the other social media channels. Uh, so come chat with us, like uh, tweet us, tweet something, we'll tweet back. We're always active, and we want to engage with community. Awesome, I, I think that's great, and I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to to do the show and. Uh, I look forward to keeping in touch with you guys and uh, maybe we can build something in the future. Of course. Sure. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks a lot for Thank having me. Thank you for the opportunity, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks again, guys. Uh, and we'll be in touch soon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good day. Okay. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can visit past shows at buildingthefutureshow.com. If you're going to the Startup Expo on February 16th and 17th in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and want to record an episode, please contact me. The music for the show is by Electric Mantra. Check them out at electricmantra.com. Until next time, keep building the future.